Hello, this is Raphael Freeman from Running Our Typesetting. In this video, we're going to learn how to master master pages in Adobe InDesign for typesetting books. So let's go straight in. We're going to create a new document. Of course, it'd help if you could see the screen. Um, six by nine is a pretty standard document. And I'm going to do my margins, um, inside margin, about 20 millimeters, outside 30, top and bottom 20 and 30 again. That's gonna be my starting point, making sure I've got a primary text frame and facing pages. And now I need to bring in my book. And here is a book that, I, that I've prepared in Microsoft Word. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video on how to prepare text for, for typesetting. So I just wanted to bring that in. Now, it, it is a big mess, this book. Um, you're going to see momentarily um, because this is set up for a, a template, which I'm not, sh not showing you here. Um, so as you can see, a little bit of a mess. So what I've done is I've actually cleaned this up a little bit for this video so that you don't have to watch me cleaning it up. And what I've done is in this video is that I've just created body and I've made body um, the, the, the style to be 12 on 15 and a half. It, it was a size, why not? And if I look at a, if I look at the measure, I see that I've got 61 characters in this line. I've got 67 in, so I went a little bit too excited, 69 there. So we've got a pretty good measure. Great, except we've got a problem. We're dealing with master pages, and our first problem is is that our baseline grid isn't really perfect. And I'd like to have my baseline grid in the right place. Um, that's the first problem. Not too hard to solve, bit annoying, but we can solve that. What I do like though is that I've created my text box. It's, a, it's, a, it's my default. My first baseline is on ascent. That I like. That's I'm pleased about, and that's going to be helpful for me when I want to position my running head but my bottom margin isn't correct. So in order to solve this problem, I did a whole video on how to do this, and it's going to be linked above, I hope, afterwards. Um, but in the meanwhile, since I did that video, I actually created a script, and this script, by the way, it doesn't work perfectly, um, but it does work, and you can have it as well, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So let's double, double click on this script. So I run the script, and what it just did Sometimes you have to run it twice, only when I demo it. If, you, if you're using it in real life, you will not have to run it twice. It's only when I demo it, I have to run it twice. And what you can see is, is that the script now has made the baseline grid to be the correct amount, at 40, uh, 50, whatever it is, um, 15 and a half. Um, it's starting exactly the right point. And my bottom margin, even though it's made it a bit smaller than I want, um, is exactly in the right place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my master page, I'm going to click here and I'm actually going to just add another, I think, 32 points to the bottom. OK, so now I have the master page. It's about three centimeters like I had. Now, if you want, you can copy and uh, paste that same um, master, that, that same margin to the outside margin as well. So I'm going to do that. Why not? And then I'm going to go back to my page and I'm just going to just check that uh, using the info panel that oh, 65 characters align, 66. The, the, you should be on average 66. 66 is the ideal. So I've got an ideal text now. So I've done the first stage. Great. So I can really throw my text away now because really I'm just, I was just putting the text here so I could set up the margin. But this is the book. So let's now go to our master page. Well, I'm going to get rid of the baseline grid and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up um, and show you how to set up in a, in a clever way, uh, set up the, uh, the, 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 the running heads. Okay, I want to make sure that this box is uh, exactly in the right place and I'm going to start by calling it body even though it has an indent and I'm going to create a new paragraph style called RH for running head because I'm very lazy. Okay, and everything's fine. I'm going to make it small caps. Why not? Let us space it a bit. Why not? Uh, I'm going to center it. Okay. So I'm going to put it in the middle and obviously I'm going to get rid of the first line indent. Okay. And um, just for the moment, I'm going to call it verso. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is not a hundred percent necessary, um, but it can help. Uh, I'm going to create another style, uh, an object style called running head. Uh, which will take that. But the most important, the, the useful thing about this is just to basically take an auto size, do height only. Um, and then what that will mean is that, that if I now 
apply that and I change the um, the, the font size here, um, then the box will, will remain the same. And now what I'm going to do is, because I know that this pink line is the top of the text, I can more easily visual, uh, sorry, uh, visually put this in the right place. And of course I'm going to need to have a recto as well. I'm going to put copy that over there and we can, we can give it a name or not. We can call it recto if we like, why not? Okay, now the next thing we need to do is we need to create some uh, page numbers. So to create page numbers, we go to edit. I never remember where it is straight away. Um, insert symbol, no, complete rubbish. Insert marker, current page number. Now I'm gonna create a new paragraph style for this. Portfolios on top. And here I'm going to be clever. Here I'm going to um, go in and make paragraph direction, sorry, alignment away from spine. Let's do a preview. So it's gonna put it over there. Now um, for my folio, I don't really want to have this tracked. And I'm not going to bother with old style numbers. Well, it won't make really much of a difference um, for small caps. And I'm going to place that over there. Actually, before I place it over there, I'm actually going to uh, make it, I'm going to put a copy of it over here. And notice it automatically went to the right. And then I can just plonk it up there, uh, make this a little bit shorter, and plonk it up there. Okay, very nice. If we now go to our page, now we have folios. And we go uh, a little bit high up. Let's make them a little bit lower down. Okay, so we're just going to go back up a bit. And we're going to just move them down a little bit. And Okay, so that's fine. Notice I didn't worry about baseline grid for, for it, whether it should be on it or not. I just, I did it by eye. Okay, now, of course, we don't really want them to be called verso and recto. So now we are going to go to um, our next little tip. So our next little tip is, as you can see, a big, big mess over here. So our next little tip is, we've got here acknowledgements, but let's start at one, let's start over here. So this is chapter, it's going to be called chapter number, and this is called chapter title. They look exactly the same, I know. Um, so let's let's make it look a little, little bit better. Um, I didn't actually prepare this, which I sh perhaps should have done beforehand, but never mind. Um, and we're going to take it away. Whereas I'm just moved everything. Okay, and we're just going to put a bit of space before there. Uh, 15 and we're going to redefine it okay and we're just going to fix that up as well so okay it's not very pretty it doesn't really matter uh, what what we really want is to decide what's going to happen on the verso and on the recto so just for the example here what we're going to do is we're going to have on the recto the word one whatever it's going to be and then on the verso we're going to have let's start at the very beginning so the chapter number now i'm going to actually do something here in chapter number i'm actually going to make the keeps option always start on a recto it's always much nicer if if the uh, if your publisher will if the publisher will allow it but i do not but the chapter title which is based on the chapter type number of course is doing the same thing so we have to undo that and let's do anywhere here. Very good. Okay, so let's go back here. So now we've got the, so just to remind us also, the chapter number, the style called chapter number, we want to keep on a recto. And the style, uh, chapter title, we're going to put on the verso. So how do we do this? So there are actually two ways of doing it. And I'm going to show you the clever way of doing it. So I'm going to go back to verso over here. And I'm going to now go into, now Versa had to be the chapter title. I'll probably get that wrong, define. We're going to create a text variable, which we're going to call Verso, because it's just easy to remember. And we have a number of options. Now, you could choose chapter running head paragraph style. That would be the clever way of doing it, okay? Um, and then I could just choose chapter title, okay? If I can find it, chapter title. That's like the automatic, that's the way you'd think you should do this, but we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to do a, a character style that we haven't created yet. So we're going to create on the fly. And we're going to call this chapter character style. Wait for it. Yeah, you guessed it. Verso. But there is no chapter character style called Verso yet. But just remember that Verso, this text here, is now a text variable called Verso, which has a character style called Verso. If you're not confused, you should be. I'm going to insert that there. So now you can see that it's got this, um, this, this, this kind of, it's a variable. So this variable is going to take 
wherever there's a character tag called Verso. We're going to do the same thing on the Recto, but I'm going to do it a lot quicker. Well, I'm not going to speed up the video because I don't know how to do that yet, but define new new character style called, yeah, Recto again, don't really care. Boom, boom, and insert. Okay, so now we go to our page. Okay, and as you can see, there are no running heads. Now, if I go to this random spread and I highlight the word biology and I go into my character styles here, which are on a different page, a character style there, and I call this Verso, okay, nothing's changed. But if I now refresh the page by making it up and down, on my Verso, I have the word biology. If I get rid of that, power, that, that character style and refresh the page, it's gone. I'm actually going to going to actually keep the character styles over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to here and I'm going to go into my paragraph style for chapter number and in chapter number I'm going to say let's do a drop cap and nested style and this nested style is going to be recto because I want this to appear on the recto and I'm going to do that until the end nested style character which is a special character which doesn't exist so it's going to keep going forever and I'm going to do the exact same thing on chapter title well, exactly the same, except completely different. Now, chapter title is based on chapter number, so it already says recto, but I'm going to change that to verso. Okay, and that's very possible that I might have one of these, uh, this A head. This A head might be based, no, it's not based on chapter header. So now what you can see we've done is now we've got our running heads just the way that we want them. Great. And now we've got chapter two, go with the flow and everything is great, okay? Um, here, the chapter title wasn't given, okay? So that's why it didn't work, okay? But here is, this is great, because now we have a problem that we can now solve, okay? So if we look, this chap, this title is too long, okay? It's too long. And because it's too long, it doesn't fit. It's overlapping here. So what we need to do is we need to have an alternative and we have two options. We could either truncate this title or we can give a different title. So we could just truncate it to it don't mean a thing. Now, if you remember in chapter title, we said that it's up until n nested style character. So if we simply insert an n nested style character, which is somewhere and I always can never find it, which is why I actually have a shortcut on my stream deck for this. But here it is, it's under insert special character other and nested style. And then we've gone to the next page and now it fits the running head. It's no longer overlapping with page 36. There's another thing though, what can happen is that sometimes the, the author or the publishing house or the editor gives, says to you, yeah, okay, so for this we'll have a completely different title. The title's going to be um, a silly title, okay? Well, I find now, insert my end nested style, which is another way of doing it, it's a lot faster, right? Then I've solved the problem. It says silly title, except I don't want it to say silly title over here. So here I come to my second script. Now we could do it the slow way. The slow way, slow way of is to hide this text. And how do we hide this text? Well, the way we hide this text is we take our character panel. We make the font size 0.1. We make the width 1%. And we make sure that the uh, character color is none. So that's how I make something invisible. I actually have a little script, which you could have that too, and we'll get to those two free scripts in a moment. Um, they'll be also available. And what I do in that situation is I simply have a, a, short, a little script that I run, which does it in one go. Now, I just mentioned two scripts. I've mentioned a script that sorts out the baseline grid and the script which hides text, hides in inverted commas. Uh, and if you're wondering how you actually get these free scripts, you have two options. You can either pop over to my website at www.runinatype.com. And if you can't remember that, then, well, it's on the bottom of the screen over there. Um, 
all. And then you'll be able to contact me and you'll be able to get my uh, email address and you can say, please, can I have the script? And I'll say, sure, greatest of pleasure. Or alternatively, you can just leave your email address in the show notes and I will send it to you with the greatest of pleasure. Um, and all you have to do in order to get these free scripts is, is that's it. You don't have to do anything. If you actually like the video, you can give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, then you can click the subscribe button and that will also motivate me to make more videos. But you don't have to. Anyway, those are the two free scripts. Um, let's now continue, though, and we're going to get very shortly to a script that isn't free, but is a script I do recommend you purchase. I discovered the script about a year or two ago, and it's completely changed the way that I do books. So if you time set more than a book a year or a book a month or a book a day, you absolutely should get this script. But before we do get this mystery script that we're talking about, um, then let's let's now look at our master pages, okay? So let, let's get rid of all these uh, panels which are making a whole big mess everywhere um, uh, because we've got some problems here. We've got an opening page here and this opening page shouldn't have three at the top and it shouldn't have a page number at the top. Uh, so what are we doing? So now we go back to our master page and what we're going to do now is we're going to create um, some more master pages. Now there's one thing that I forgot to mention and I do not want to start all over again with this video so I'm going to mention it now. It's very important when we created um, the new video, when we created a new document, sorry, you notice it said primary text frame. Okay and if we right click on these two text frames you will see it says primary text frame and you can also see over here uh, that little rectangle with two arrows and that lets you know that these are primary text frames just keep that in mind and make sure the primary text frames you're going to see why soon we're going to make a new master and this is going to be my opening pages and i'm going to type opening and it's going to be passed based on master page a uh, then I'm going to go and make another new master. Um, sorry, little flies in front of my face. And I'm going to call that blank. But blank is going to be based, based on master page A. And then I'm going to make a new, another new master, lots of new masters that I don't really need for this book, but I always like to have these created. It's by part page, and that's going to be based on master page X. Okay, now let's go to my opening page. Okay, so my opening page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these two running heads and I'm going to take one of my folios, I'm going to make it full width, I'm going to center it and just just to be good I'm going to make uh, folios on opening page a new style. Okay so I created that. Um, I'm going to get rid of that altogether. It's control shift that releases things from the master page and these, this particular client, I will often have pages that open on a verso, even though I don't like that. So uh, let's just make sure everything's perfectly lined up. Um, and there you go. Okay. Now the exact position of the the, the bottom uh, when numbers should be the bottom. So ideally, they should f fall around two thirds of the height. Um, of the um, of the bottom space that you have okay and if you've left about 30 millimeters that should work so now we've got our opening page the next thing that we're going to do is uh, before I do that I have to remind myself what the leading is the leading is 15 and a half okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop um, the uh, top of the margin by 15 and a half multiplied by five. I like the, it doesn't have to be just that's what I want to do. So 15 and a half by five is 77.5. I do have a little calculator on my desk. That is how I did that math so quickly. I'm not a genius. And you do okay. And in theory, these boxes should come down and they used to and up until about CS6 and they stopped coming down automatically. Anyway, never mind. So now I've got my master page and because I did a multiple of 15 and a half, then everything's going to still sit on the baseline grid. Now I'm going to get to my blank page. Now, some of you are going to say uh, you've made a mistake. You should not have a text box on your blank page. And you're right, you shouldn't. But we're going to keep it anyway because we're going to need those that that those frames for this mystery script that I keep alluding to. And for some reason, the part pages shifted to the right. I have no idea why. And my part pages are very much like blank pages, except the like opening pages, like they go down a bit um, and there are no pages. In this particular book, I don't actually think we need you. We're not going to be using master pages. Um, I see some things got a little bit messed up. Sometimes if all your pages get messed up, uh, which has happened here because I run my script, 
just delete all the pages and just let it reflow again and then it'll all be fixed. Blah, blah, blah. There you go. See, it's all fixed now. Okay, so here's my thing, right? Here's my problem. My problem is that I now have set up my master pages, but I don't really want to spend time applying them because I'm lazy, right? I'm a very lazy typesetter. So I want things to be done quickly. So I don't want to have to drag the X down onto here or use the short and control shift. I think it's F7 if I remember correctly. Oh, I do and hit X. I could, but I don't want to. And I don't want to have to now go and apply a blank page to the opposite page because I'm lazy. So if you're lazy, then what you need to do is you need to buy this script called Mastermatic. And this is a script that I discovered, as I say, about a year or two ago. And there's not a single book I think I do today without using the script. And this is what I can do and watch. I'm going to do live updates, which don't do if you've got an 800 page book. And I'm going to say, make all the pages a master. Make my blank, and this is important. This is why I needed to have it a text box. And if you see a chapter number, style or chapter title or both or a multiple or you can do both watch this you can do chap I can't find chapter number here's chapter title apply x and if you see chapter number here it is or supply x and if you see a part which you're not going to because it doesn't exist then you can apply part and watch this boom enter and there you go my whole document has been applied automatically all the various opening pages okay and what's really nice about this is that let's say now i go and see oh everything is just everything's just doing it right anyway let's ignore the beginning pages so now if i decide that my client says no 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 a matter of principle is actually chapter two and a half so i can now type two and a half and i can make this now chapter i'm going to bring over the paragraph styles chapter number Okay, and I'm going to make a matter of, see, it's already done it. I didn't only have to give chapter title. Chapter title, and there you have it. We've got everything automatically sorted out, and it fixes everything. And if anything needs to be a blank page, let's say I now delete. Uh, here we go. I'm going to delete these paragraphs. Then the, the verso of 27 is going to, in a matter of a few minutes, a few seconds, depending on the size of the book, uh, go and uh, be blank. And there you go. It's already applied the blank pages. So um, there you go. That is how to master master pages when setting a book. I'm going to put in the show notes. I'm going to put into you a link to the form of the book so you can learn all about how to set margins and elements of typographic style. If you have to choose between one of them by elements of typographic style, um, I'm going to put a link into Mastermatic. I think it's a very worthwhile um, uh, script that you should own. And he has a whole bunch of scripts on his website. I use a lot of them and I will mention them in my videos and you should do that. In So there you go. If you've enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you did not, I'm not quite sure why you waited all the way to the end of the video to get to this point. So assuming that you have, then I'm glad you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to find out about more videos when they come up, then I would suggest subscribing to this channel. If you have a manuscript that needs typesetting or you just have a general question about the video, you can leave it in the comments below or you can go over to our website and see what other services we also provide. Until the next time, this was Raphael Freeman from Running Our Typesetting.